Hello and welcome to micro segmentation. It's not just for InfoSec anymore. Today's webinar is sponsored by Truefort and produced by Actual Tech Media. My name is Scott Becker. I'm from Actual Tech Media and I'm excited to be your moderator for this special event. Now, before we get to today's great content, we do have a few housekeeping items that will help you get the most out of this demo cast session. First off, we want this to be an informative event for you, so we encourage any questions in the questions box in our webinar control panel. A lot of you have been saying hello, like where you're from, and uh, we always love to see that. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, so, you know, that's a great place to do that. You can also in there let us know if you're having any technical uh, difficulties. If uh, a browser refresh is going to fix most audio, video, or slide advancement issues, but if that doesn't work, just let us know there in the Q&A and we'll provide further technical assistance. Of course, the main point of the Q&A is to ask questions of our expert presenter. We'll have a Q&A portion at the end, so uh, get those questions ready, type them in as soon as you have them. Now, next, in the handout section of your webinar control panel, you'll find that we're offering several resources, and I'd especially like to call your attention to three PDFs, um, all from Truefort. There's a Truefort Platform Overview White Paper, there's a Truefort Platform Solution Brief, and a Truefort Micro Segmentation Solution Brief. So check those out, along with some of your standard actual tech media resources, like the Guerrilla Guide Book Club and the ATM Event Center. So I encourage you to access all those resources now and share them with your friends and colleagues. Now, at the end of this webinar event, we will be giving away a $250 Amazon gift card to one lucky registrant. Of course, you must be in attendance during the live event to qualify for the prize. Official terms and conditions of today's prize drawing can be found in the handout section. Just scroll to the bottom and you'll find the, uh, the T's and C's link there. Uh-oh, and it sounds like the uh, the lawn guy is getting close to me here, but <laughs> finally, one of the best benefits of this event is the opportunity to ask a question of our expert presenters. And so to help encourage your questions, we have a special additional prize for you. That's another Amazon gift card, this one for 50 bucks for the best question. So after the event is over, we'll look at all the questions that came in, pick out the very best one, and contact that prize winner. Okay, and with all that out of the way, let's get to today's fantastic content. It's my pleasure to introduce you to our presenter today. We have Matthew Johnson, who's Senior Sales Engineer for Truefort. Well, Matt, welcome. Thanks for being here. Hey, it's great to see you. How are things? Great. Yeah, so why don't you, uh, you know, maybe give us some, some background about, about micro-segmentation and, and get us started here. Cool. So micro segmentation is the process by which you visualize everything in your environment so you know what's happening and then you give it some time to burn in so you don't, well, one, you don't break your applications, which is a big no-no as we all know in our business. And also so that you get a sense with, so a behavioral profile of what the norm is. So you can start from this norm and be sure that only things that belong are there. And then you do that burn in phase and micro segmentation is where you actually enforce these things because visualization is great because you get reporting, but once you enforce, then anything that doesn't specifically get allowed is implicitly denied under that zero trust framework of trust, but deny and only allowed connections. So you're not messing around with a billion denies. You just say only these things can talk to these things by these ports, processes and services. So it's pretty cool. It's something I've been doing for a long time, you know, via uh, the same means everybody else did, right? You put in internal firewalls or you put in a big zone and you did all these painstaking things. And there was a natural evolution. And this has really become, I'd say, the past seven, eight years of my career have been dedicated to this. So it's something I'm pretty passionate about. So I'm going to start my presentation here. And I've, hopefully everyone apologize for the voice the past couple of days of wildfires here in, uh, in Canada. The smoke in Chicago has given me that uh, smoky voice. So... Hey, a quick agenda, and I'll try to stick to this as best I can, but I may go off on a tangent and then you can ask me some questions and uh, bring me back. So uh, we're, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about visibility, zero trust, zero trust micro segmentation, 
We're going to talk about challenges facing today's security teams, which are legion. It's it's not just the hard things stopping it, but there's also burnout and things like that and analysis paralysis. Power visualization, reporting and enforcement using zero trust micro segmentation. I was just talking about that thing. Um, the value of micro segmentation is a part of resiliency planning and response. And people don't really think of it as one of those disaster recovery things or as a disaster if you if you face an event from a negative actor. A, a ransomware attack could be as crippling as a data center outage. And so this is an important thing to consider and kind of break down some of those silos. That's what micro segmentation is great at doing is uh, those security and infrastructure and the app teams usually stand in different silos and don't really work together. But resiliency planning brings you together and brings more value to everyone. Um, and that leads us to our second. There, there are additional things that Truefort does, but what micro segmentation gives to people outside of the, like the traditional InfoSec organization. Then I'll do a short demonstration and then we can go straight to some Q&A. All right. So everybody knows, you know, the the big challenges that security uh, faces on a day to day basis is, as I like to say, you know, they help, we have to be right every single time, millions and millions of times a day, and they only have to get lucky once to get in, right? And we're expected to do things at the speed of business. And the nature of security itself is to slow things down, to inspect them, to do things, to make sure that everything that's supposed to be blocked is blocked. And blocking everything is really hard because if you block the wrong thing, it's a chain of events and then you cause an uptime event. So then you're, you never seem to win. And that leads to those things like uh, burnout on your team and because everybody's just so tired of always having to be right. And, chasing down all the false positives and all the vulnerabilities. Like this is what people end up spending their lives doing. And it's, it's a hard thing and it causes people to leave organizations and then you have churn. So it's a much bigger picture than just protecting the application. It's protecting these teams that are so critical. So there, there are application risks, right? If a thing takes too long, then, or you need to do all sorts of uh, change windows to, to make things happen, then you're going to have people working at night, but you also risk breaking applications. And that's what you don't want to do. Network segmentation is hard because you really get no context whatsoever. You're trying to block between IP and IP, and you're trying to create these rules based on you know, minimum context and no visibility. And that's hard. Not we're humans, we're built to do things visually, right? Our sight, our, the portion of, in our brain that is dedicated to ingesting what we see is one of the largest pieces of our processing centers. So the thing we do is we want you to be able to see these things. And then XDR, I, those tools, EDR, XDR, they are great at doing what they do, but they don't give you a, like a behavioral baseline profile to say, this is our ideal state. Anything that doesn't belong here is anomalous. It might be someone changing, legitimately changing a configuration without following process and procedure, but it could also be a zero day. It could be a ransomware attack. It could be that first APT incursion from step one to step two. So what you need is visibility. Now, this is this slide, it's a good slide, right? But this is what we all know. It's not that first hop that's the worst. It's not seeing that first hop when it goes to the second, to the third, to the fourth, to the fifth, to the 10,000th. Because what happens is, and think about these breaches, think about the Marriott Starwood breach, right? It, that was, I always call it the Marriott Starwood breach because we all know it wasn't Marriott. They acquired another organization, Starwood, and they had already been breached and they did not see that. They did a great job of merging systems, but that just gave the bad guys a new place to go. And they have, if you're not visualizing these things, if you're not proactively making sure that these connections are valid and viable and that nothing negative is going to be allowed, then they have all the time in the world. And this is gonna go back, I'm gonna always loop back to this, the, the conversation about resiliency. If they're in there, they know that tape costs money, 
disk costs money. So your disaster recovery plan that you may have, you may be really proud of yourself, but ha about having you know a year worth of backup or two years worth of backup, they don't care. They'll wait you out or they'll wait until it's so painful and you would lose so much information that that's when you've got to pay them. Um, stolen credentials. This is a cool one. This is another, uh, I talked about how we can do service accounts and how we can map and protect service accounts. Sometimes there are thousands of them. Sometimes they're under users' names who haven't been there for a decade because it's so hard to untangle these things. What's the best way to identify and to plant your ransomware flag everywhere in an organization? You steal somebody's credentials. It's a fish, you know, a spear fish, just random. You need to pay this bill. Click this link now. Click. Now they own Bob in accounting. The next step is to work your way through and find another and another and another account until finally you get those elevated privileges where you can do something big, like start planting software everywhere. And we've seen software supply chain attacks. You know, there's Kaseya, there's SolarWinds, there's, hey, there, these are things that are not a thing that you can prevent because it looks like normal behavior and it's coming from a trusted supplier or vendor. And so they give access points. I mean, you can go clear back to Target. The Target breach was due to an HVAC co contractor. They got hacked and they worked through that portal to find elevated privileges and they were able to steal PII from millions of people. So we're always under siege. And when you can't see things, I, I think about a submarine without uh, a periscope. You can't see it. You're in a box and you don't know where, what's been breached. You don't know who's attacking you and you can't figure those things out. So here's where we come to, you know, I'm going to keep talking about visibility over and over again. If you can't see it, you can't protect it. So this is another one. Uh, I know everybody has uh, hates hearing that you need to put a new agent on. And the true fort agent is very lightweight, but Sometimes there are organizations that just that one more thing, that's that straw that breaks the camel's back. And so we've partnered with two of the biggest EDR organizations in the world, and that's CrowdStrike and Sentinel One. And we can operate through their native agents and have the functionality feed back to our platform perform our, our platform appliances. So one less agent. There's no such thing as agentless for this is not an agentless transaction. This is simply using someone else's and giving you that much less management. So, and also, you know, one more agent on, you know, that requires all these new things. Sometimes that silos your investigation response process. And yes, there's SOAR and there's SIM and there are these aggregators and everything. But again, we come back to burnout where there's so many things coming in, it's hard to separate that static from the signal. It keeps coming back around, right? What do you do? You want visibility and control in production. And you know, for so many years, people would spend millions of dollars or thousands of hours putting together a map, like a, you know, on a Visio that you could see these things and see what happened. And the, the, that, the sad thing is, the second you finish those, you finish that, it's not worth what it's supposed to be worth. So it's not worth the paper it's printed on. So what those static maps were a great way to try to mitigate, but it just wasn't working. And so there were organizations that, you know, there was Cisco and VMware, and they were like, ta-da, we're going to do ACI and we're going to do uh, ACI with Tetration, NSX with, you know, with Verney, and we're going to do these things. Here's the problem. They were doing it with basically network tools. And so everything you did could break the entire organization. And it took years to get there. And it cost millions and millions and millions of dollars and took all sorts of CCIEs or VCDXs to manage these things. It was complex. It's complex. It's cumbersome. It's hard. It's all these things. But here came this next generation of visualization and segmentation tools. And Truefort has been doing this successfully with some of the largest companies on the planet. And what we bring is quick path to visibility, quick path to that burn-in, that profiling, that behavioral learning, and then figuring out that normal application behavior and then give you 
a path to success, which is micro segmentation. And you don't have to do micro segmentation all at once. You don't have to do everything all at once. You have you can create a process where EMR or ERP or whatever that that big thing, whether it's Epic or SAP or whatever's important to your organization, you can start with that tier and keep the visibility in the rest of the organization and work toward micro segmentation on tier one, tier two, tier three, et cetera. So what do we do? Discover. We just, this is where that initial, you turn on CrowdStrike or Sentinel One and it lights up within minutes. Anything that's got a CrowdStrike agent on it will have it. Now you may have things that CrowdStrike and Sentinel One can't cover. That's fine. You can do a hybrid approach with the TrueFort agent on these things that might be superseded operating systems, or uh, they might just not have uh, co compatibility for CrowdStrike or for Sentinel One. And that's fine. You can do that thing. And we'll talk about this a little bit in, in, as we progress here, but there are also going to be things that, you know, there's OT devices, there's ITOT devices, there are functions that, you know, Windows update and things like that, that we can't put an agent on, but we can identify those things as part of process and say, okay, we're going to do this thing. And we're going to allow this, you know, this FQDN to, to speak to us via this port protocol and service and only this port protocol and services. So we're only allowing things. We're not blocking, we're simply saying, and this makes it a much simpler thing instead of trying to block tens of thousands of other things on multiple platforms. So again, your, your old iron, your virtualization, your multiple cloud platforms, all these things, this is where we give you the ability to see things across the entire portfolio. So next step, this is where we identify from the minute you're visualizing things, we start saying, okay, let's look at this behavior. And you can, you'll, it's the burn in phase. Hey, who's talking, right? Who's talking to whom? What ports, protocols, and services? What are they, what are they saying to each other? You know, what's the command that we executed? Should they be doing this 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Or is this a certain time, only a certain time that does that thing? And then what applications they belong to? Then that's, again, you have uh, your ERP, you have your EMR, you may have vendor systems and customer portals and things like that. We want to identify those things using the context that we have and say, ah, this is the thing we want to do. And there, there's another big step to this. How do you map these common services, like to stop those supply chain attacks, right? Your solar winds, Active Directory, uh, Kaseya, or other vendors that Epic or SAP. Like, what is this thing? Is this normal behavior? Yes, it is. Okay. And so now we have a baseline, we profile this thing. And so this is our net, our new normal. Next step is we enforce. So you burn this in, you're sure you're not going to break the application and you're sure that you haven't done these, like you haven't done anything that's going to let the bad guys in. And so once you enforce, this is where you can use the burn in period and use that telemetry and those the alerts that are generated to say up oh, this is negative or this is positive i shouldn't allow it this is negative and we need to mitigate this right now but only when you enforce do you get that real time blocking where you say we can this network this network connection is not allowed so it's going to be automatically blocked so as i said earlier anything that isn't specifically allowed is implicitly denied under this model so if there's a new privileged account that's trying to be used by whatever, an APT, a uh, ransomware gang, wh whomever is after you, then you can disable that privilege. Oh, I see this privileged account. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to block that and I'm going to alert you to that. And any new process, this goes along with the network connections, any new process would be automatically killed if it hadn't been previously allowed. But if it's a, if it's a valid process, an update to an application, things like that, that, or if we do a patch or something like that, this is where you can validate this thing and bring it easily into your policy and you re-baseline. So now you know your new normal, your net new normal. And so this is a process. There's no such thing as set it and forget it in security. We all know that. You have to update, you have to manage and maintain, but we make it easy for you to do these things. Hey, Matt, I've got a couple of questions for you based on, on some of the stuff that you've talked about already. Um, one of them is, 
you know, you mentioned like the CrowdStrike and Sentinel One. Are those required for customers? You know, to no, use we order? we have a lot of customers that don't have uh, they they have neither CrowdStrike nor Sentinel One, and we'll use our our TrueFort agent, which actually gives you. I'll I'll give you a, a preview. It gives you those you know, managing service accounts, managing config drift, doing all these things, file integrity monitoring, in addition to micro segmentation. And this is what's cool about TrueFort, and nobody else does this in the industry. We are a true multi-product platform, but you get these things along with what we do with very little additional lift. And you can turn them on and you can begin to baseline these other things. So it's pretty, I get excited about it. That's why I'm here, I'm a dork, but it's uh, it works really well and it's real time. You can do this real time with our with the TrueFort agent. There's a little bit, and this is because of how EDR works, how CrowdStrike, how a third-party firewall works, CrowdStrike and Sentinel One. It's a little less than real time, but with TrueFort, you can put it in. And as I said, you can do it uh, as a hybrid. If if you have a big portfolio with CrowdStrike, but you also have a substantial environment that you you need to protect with a, the TrueFort agent, we can do that as well. Okay. Very cool. And, and then as far as the agent goes, what, what operating systems do you support on that? That's a great question. And I have a slide that I'll get to, but I, th there is, we can do Linux, we can do Windows, we can do Solaris and AIX, we can, and we can go back, to, as I said, to superseded operating systems. So it's, it's a pretty broad space. And we can also do containers because everybody's got cloud. We can do containers and we can do some serverless functions right now. And as everyone knows, these things, that's speed of business. So we're very careful with that to make sure that we're not slowing down the business. Gotcha. No, that's, that's great. And the other question I wanted to ask is, you know, you've been talking about micro segmentation. Is, is TrueFort a product that, that gives you micro segmentation? Are you creating micro segmentation in your organization by, by deploying TrueFort True or... Is that sort of a separate project and, and true for is, is defending? This is how we were born and what we were born to do, right? I, there, our co-founders worked in big finance for decades, right? And they had been in organizations where they were breached. And when the board comes to you and the C-levels come to you and they say, what happened? And you say, I don't, they could only say, I don't know. And when they said, well, are they still in? I don't know. Well, why not? Because we can't see. And so they decided to take their experiences and they started TrueFort. And from there, this discover, understand, that enforce, that is what TrueFort was built to do. And that's where that micro segmentation is. Once you've enforced, that's the micro segmentation piece. Okay. Hey, and then one last question, and then I'll, I'll let you proceed. But um, how long does a micro segmentation project take? I mean, how long does it take to, to do all these steps and then sort of to, to fine tune it, you know? It, you know, it depends on, it really, a lot of it depends on the, the size of the organization, but it also depends on the speed of the organization. Like what we do, our professional services, it's rarely, uh, it, we know that people doing these things have a million other projects. They are doing their day jobs where they're scanning for vulnerabilities and they're trying to stop things. They're trying to do things. They've got five different new projects that they've been given where they're supposed to research this new thing and do a proof of concept. And so we come in and we try to make it as easy as possible. And we do a lot of that heavy lifting and churn, but we also enable them to continue to do these things. And our process is fairly simple. So, you know, in real, as I said, with CrowdStrike and with Sentinel One, you've already got these things, right? So once you go to the CrowdStrike or Sentinel One store and you click try, you know, you cr you click on the True Fort button, then ta-da! Guess what? It's lit up and it's ready to go. So it takes literally minutes. Uh, I was on a proof of concept where we did three thousand servers in less than like five minutes, and that was mostly just going to the website, logging in, clicking through. Now with the TrueFort agent, you've got a there. You've got to package the thing. Most organizations have a process. They use like Tanium Deploy or SCCM or some method to to deploy these things. And so we go through that. We help you package these things. It's very simple. You send these things out, and now here we go. You you've created this application. 
than that burn in. Most people, you, you can, we prefer to stay two weeks or so to burn it in because you can easily add new functions. We like to help people get to that, understand that behavioral profiling very quickly. But other organizations, they've been through these things where they've tried to do things with intelligence and they may want to wait a quarter. But the danger is always, hey, we waited a quarter and then three days later we ran a quarterly or a semi-annual or an annual thing and that happened. But this is why a lot of the time when we're building these out, out these applications, we'll say, hey, can you bring the app, have the app owner run through their quarterly process on, you know, on their dev environment, right? And run through a quarterly, annual, semi-annual, all these things that they do. Look, all the lines are green. I'll show you that in a bit. Red line means unaccounted for traffic. Green line means accounted for traffic and allowed traffic. So those are the things we do. We So we can drive through and get people done depending on size of organization, again, and their availability in weeks to maybe a couple months, if that's what they need. Okay. So it's at the speed of the organization and their comfort in turning it on, really. Great. Excellent. All right. Well, I know everybody's excited about seeing the demo, so I'll let yeah. you keep going. Cool. So you know, let's wrap this background, right? Uh, TrueFord enables customers. You're going to take those existing agents and you're going to take a little bit less overhead. It's all, it's, you're still using our appliance, but one less thing to, to update and to do these things, because guess what? CrowdStrike, it's going to update what we do al along with the CrowdStrike agent. Um, the clarity part is huge. It's, and people say sometimes, you know, oh, the, the account, the, the, the application team never, they're never going to kind of want to look at this or it's going to be hard to get the infrastructure team. And I'm telling you from like, from experience, once these folks see what they're looking at and we can give you role based. So, Hey, this is the SAP team. They get you know, read only just so view only access to SAP or SAP and these secondary applications because they need to, but when they see how things are interacting, it's, it's big. And that goes for infrastructure teams as well. And once you have that team, that brings you better security across the board. Um, and the lateral movement, once we enforce, once we're really micro segmenting, that's where we get the true proactive prevention. You have reactive prevention when you're in visibility mode because then you can take this thing, but it, you're never going to be able to stop someone from getting into your environment. But the thing that you really want to do is control that blast radius. Don't let it get past that first hop. Hey, I'm seeing this bad thing happening. I've gone back, I've figured out who, where it's coming from, what port protocol and service it's on, and I can change, I can stop this thing after the first step. So that's the big thing is the visibility gives you the ability to control that lateral movement that's uh, so dangerous for us. Um, let's talk about what the platform does. And I've been talking around and through this, and but here is, I like this slide because it gives you kind of the baseline for everything. And again, zero trust segmentation, that micro segment enforced segmentation, that's the, the bread and butter and what a lot of people come to us to do. But we also have customers who come to us specifically for service count analytics, for file integrity monitoring. And the workload hardening piece is fantastic. We can follow those SIS controls and we can say, you know, I don't want config drift to happen here. Or you can view where it's config. You may say, okay, I'm not gonna block config drift, but I want it to be reported and I wanna see this thing. And we do this through that environmental observ uh, observability. Then we get the baseline and then you get that deviation alerting. And yes, we can feed into SIM and SOAR. It's just like what everyone else does. And uh, I'll pause here. There are two different ways you can uh, use true for right? We have CrowdStrike and Sentinel one agents, but the back end, our appliance, it is scalable and built on high frequency trading platforms. So we can scale up and scale up very quickly. So it's never going to cause a lag, but we can do it either an on-premise appliance or a set. We have a SaaS offering and the SaaS offering is what more and more people are, are choosing to do because it's just like you don't want another agent. You don't want 
any more VMs to manage. You don't want to have to do one more thing that you're doing the updating. So they like us to do it. And more and more organizations that five years ago, banks, big banks, never would have done these things. Hospitals, they're like, nope, we're all in. So this platform like gives you everything on this list as part of what we do. Um, now the flexible collection, I was, I, this is kind of cool. It, you can do, we can take from your CMDB, we can take from a spreadsheet, I've taken tags, you can use like an Axonius, like wherever we can get data, because when we say, hey, do you have a, do you have a CMDB? And people are like, well, we do, but it's terrible and we're scared of it. And the, the cool thing that we can do is once we do this thing, we don't wanna be your single source of truth, but we can take this, we can take the data that you give us, it's, we're gonna show them, show you what's correct, and then we can help reinform that CMDB to make it that source of truth. Now you guys are looking here and you're seeing Armis. Now, if you're in manufacturing or you're in healthcare, if you have a lot of OT and IOT things, then you know who Armis is. These, they are, I think the leading OT, IOT, they, they take information and they gather that information and say, ah, this is a SCADA device. This is a PLC. This is, you know, these, uh, this is a blood pressure monitor, right? The things, those thousands and thousands of things could, that could be an attack a, a negative actor can inject, you know, code through any one of these things. Uh, if you think there was a, uh, one of the big casinos was breached through a camera, an IP camera in a giant, in a fish tank. I mean, they're so innovative. Again, they, we have to be right every single time. They just have to get lucky once. And then you also have the true fort agent, which is, gives you, that's the only option that gives you every single one of those things. So just being clear on this now, any workload, I, you know, we, we have, we can do AIX, we can do Solaris, we can do windows back to server 2003. We can do CentOS and Ubuntu. Of course, Kubernetes, like, uh, different flavors of Kuber, and Docker, of course, for, for, for individual containers. So the goal is to be wherever you need to be as a single platform instead of the old way where you, you install a bunch of virtual Palos or ASAs or FortiGates or whatever, and you get this rule expansion. And all of a sudden, you have sprawl that's almost impossible to keep up with. And this is where you make decisions like, well, I'm just going to do a blanket allow because the app team is saying, what do you mean six months before we can get this done? So, or you run the risk of doing something that breaks one or more applications, which is just as devastating as, as an attack is in some cases. So there's an organization that I've worked with for many, many years. And when they're down for a single hour, it's $50 million. So imagine being down for days during a ransomware attack. That means a restatement of earnings. That means heads roll, which I've always thought was weird when somebody gets attacked. You want people who have experience going through these things, but that's just my personal you know, opinion. So now here we are. And I'd like to at the I'd, I'd like to do the demo now. So we're just going to see how things look. And what you're seeing now, this is all of the applications in our organization. So uh, the red lines unaccounted for traffic could be positive, could be negative. In the beginning, they're all going to be red lines. And it's it's our job to profile and create that policy, right? Accept that, accept that profiles as, as the policy. So where I the way that you're going to navigate through through Realm is you you can create these views. And the first thing that you're going to do, so you don't have to do this over and over and over again, this is where you have you create your common services. These are the whatever, your infrastructure services, your whatever you want to call these things. It's Active Directory, it's file servers, it's Rapid7 or Commvault or Rubric, or I don't want to leave anybody out and have somebody mad at me. But these are the things that talk to everybody. And you want to account for those things first. So that way we see these things and it just makes your life that much easier. Um, I've got a couple of different views here for our demo. I like manufacturing because this gives us the ability to kind of show a lot of different things off. Uh, you know, we did talk earlier, I talked about Armis, I talked about the IT and the IoT things. With our partnership in Arma, with Armis, they send us this like really valuable telemetry. So 
I can see these things that talk to every, like that, that we're talking to. So we've got a PLC cabinet, I've got these panels, I've got SCADA servers. So all of these things that I'm supposed to be talking to. Now, I haven't approved these paths just yet. So I'm letting, let's say that we're burning this in, but I, I love the fact that we're bridging that IT, OT, IOT gap, because that's the biggest, now that we're doing things like what Truefort does, what Armist does, you, you still have that gap where something that we can't account for is you, you can't figure, it takes sometimes weeks to months to figure out what those things are because you've got to call the factory guys and the IT and the OT is usually different teams. So that's a very interesting thing. Um, what we're seeing here, like this is the thing that we're protecting. This is the application, right? These are the things that we've mostly approved and we're talking to and we've identified. And this unregistered node, this could be almost anything. And it's our job. We've already allowed this, but we would say, ah, what is this thing? Oh, it's an internal, it's a some device, but we're gonna identify this as part of our process and turn it into the, something on the gray side. Make sense? Yep. All right. So let's go back. And, and Realm is what we call our, our UI, like when you're viewing things from, uh, in a, from a graphic format. You can also, and the grid is good when you're kind of trying to search things out. So we go from graph to grid, right? And this is where I can see all of these things and whether this thing is in compliance or not. Oh, I'm gonna, I'll have to go through and see what these things are. And hey, why is, you know, why are these things talking to, to each other? Oh, is that okay? Sure. This is where your application team can say, yeah, they have to do this thing, right? Or, hey, I validated this when I did my common services, that's CyberArk. Let's go back to our graph though. I like visual things. This is what makes it really work for me. Now, in manufacturing, I'm gonna zoom this just a little bit. In manufacturing, usually that big thing that everybody want, like wants to protect first, that's your ERP, because what, what does SAP do? Everything. So you've got, uh, that's usually what you start with. And again, I've talked about this healthcare, it's your EMR. And I, I usually put these two things together because they are both these big critical things that run everything. Again, the organization that I work with, that I've worked with a lot in the past, that it's $50 million an hour. They also, you know, there, there's a point at which you can't shut this thing down, period. So we do this seamlessly without any sort of downtime or outage. Now, you see here, the ERP, I'm gonna right click here, and I'm gonna go to application details. And we can go, I can, there's a lot of different ways to get there. I can check for alerts down at the bottom here. And this is kind of cool. I really, uh, so I can go through and yeah, this is great. I can see these things, but I don't know what exactly it's, it's hard to view. It's I'm, I'm looking at this. I'm like, I don't, it's, it's not a lot of value to me. Right. But what I can do is I can take this and I'm going to right click. There we go. I'm going to break this down. And this is what's awesome. I'm going to zoom in here. I can go down to my processes here and I can see what's who's doing what. And this is really valuable. And I can do this so quickly. And remember, this is with the true Ford agent. This is happening in real time. It's a little less uh, real time. Not it's still not extraordinarily long. It's you know that five to 10 minutes that a CrowdStrike or a Sentinel one does with those agents. But I can see like who, what's running right now. Okay, it's crony. And the command is the user bin crony D. And so I can trace this thing to this IP address. We've, it's an outbound and we've said this is okay. And then here's where it's passing this off to something outside of us. And so I can figure out if this is viable or not viable. And the same goes here, you have, uh, this is a, we just haven't allowed this because this is a trusted server. We've got an agent on it and it's trying to do HA proxy and see, we have another crony event happening right now. Now, one of the reasons I came here uh, from my former job, which was a great job, had a great time, 
but there's this, we do what's called we it's for just simple not very creative but it's a dvr function like if you look down here i've got things that go back you know 101 p.m 9 14 and so i want to see what this thing is but it's outside of my visualization so we're going to look for look up using this dvr we can pause this function right i click on my timeline here and it's 9 14 is what we're doing and i can either look at this chart but I, I like the slider here and I can go back. We have a, uh, it's basically storage. You can have, you could do this for a year. You could do this for a year and a half, but this, this is going to give you a timeline that we can do this. And we're just going to go back to nine fourteen this morning, 13, 14 and ten nine. And then 14, so I'm going to move that down here. So now I can see this thing and I can go to the process and see who, who's doing what. So I can view what this process is and say, oh, it's network services. And was this a good thing? And was this the right thing or the wrong thing? And I can go down and I can view through any of these things. I can actually do some filtering as well. But this DVR where I can dig in and identify down to the process level at the time I want to look so I can go back and visualize and remediate, this is fantastic. And it it's super valuable when you can get that deep in the organization. And you've got some of these process chains are, are, are deep, right? You've got two, three, four, five, and you've got the process tree where you figure out where things are going and what they're doing. Um, let's go, we can do, so. there's a lot of different things that we can do here. So you can correlate these alerts. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit and I'm actually gonna. So I can take these things back and this is where I can identify what, where these alerts are coming from and what the agent. And so you can very quickly visualize this response quickly. If you're not in, if you're only in visualization and not in micro segmentation and forced micro segmentation. Um, at this point, I mean, I'd like to welcome any questions. I just wanted to do a very quick demo on this webcast because we could easily get into an hour worth of things and I'd much rather have that conversation or you have that conversation with one of my peers or me on a deeper dive demo. Does that sound okay? That sounds good. That was a great demo. Really interesting. Um, great visualizations in this product. Um, it, it, it is absolutely. And I, I'm just going to let the cat out of the bag a little bit. We're, we're working on a version that's even going to make, it's going to be even better than this. It's when I saw it, I was, Again, because I'm passionate about this, but it, we're really excited about what's uh, what's what it's going to bring to our our users and our customers. Nice. Well, you'll have to come back when when that's ready to show and, and show that to us then. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Let's. Uh, we we've got a lot of questions here in the console, so uh, let's get to some of those. All right. Just looking through here at some of these. Um, so Matthew, uh, just two quick things. Uh, John says, uh, "Dang, that's neat." It came in at some point during the uh, during the demo, uh, but I, I didn't catch exactly what what, uh, what they're referring to. Um, and and Carrie notes that uh, your laptop 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 trackpad buttons are a little bit loud. <laughs> no. but, uh, uh, that's uh, sorry, guys. If that was if that was annoying, I I apologize. <laughs> So uh, let's see, uh, a first question here from Paul is, is wondering, can Truefort also offer legacy apps and infrastructure uh, more effective protection using micro segmentation policies? You know, that's actually one of the, that's a primary use case, especially, you know, again, coming back to manufacturing, there are going to be superseded operating systems that are out there being protected by almost nothing. Maybe you've got a, a firewall, maybe you have an older uh, antivirus or EDR protecting it. But the thing, there are many different directions to do it. Like if you have an, an Armis or something like that, then you can, we can use and inform that. But again, we go back 
back to server 2003 and i believe we go back to uh linux 6 so um we can protect them in a lot of different ways you remember those unregistered nodes we can account for those nodes and protect those things with everything around them so there there are 15 different ways we could get there it would just depend on knowing what the situation is that's where we it'd be great to if someone's interested in that we sit down we talk about what it looks like and then we define and design a solution that will meet that use case okay super and uh, everybody note that uh, matthew's uh, email address is right here on screen um so you know, and, and John had another question, and this is interesting. I always love questions like this about sort of, you know, almost unintended uses of products where they're really interesting. They're wondering how useful is this, if for nothing else, for generating and maintaining a map? Well, that's that's actually another primary use case because okay. it, a lot of people they they may just want to do visualization and they'll use other tools to support those things we can feed alert data into sim or into soar and from there you can process that as a workflow there but more often than not people will say okay we're going to just do visibility and it's it's great i mean you see it light up and it's pretty cool but they'll decide some people they they want a micro segment out of the gate. They want to do to first tier, second tier, third tier. Some people say, I just want my tier one applications, but that visibility is so valuable. And we do offer that as one of our, one of our solutions where it's visibility only. Very cool. Okay, great. We have another question here from, from L uh, who's asking about FIM, which I, I think is, is that file integrity monitoring? Is that, is that what FIM right, is? Right. If I am? So the question so, is, you do FIM, do you also automatically classify the data or is it more focused on DLP? We, so we, do, we don't do DLP because we're not cracking files and inspecting, right? But what we can do is feed through and help inform that. What we do is we, cut, we classify that and then we can alert to changes and things like that in, in, on the file. Okay, awesome. Um, another question here, uh, do you integrate with IoT vendors like Dragos? Well, as you saw, the one of the biggest ones out there uh, that is Armus. And we do, uh, we have a pretty tight integration with them. And we're a young company and we have the ability to rotate quickly. If, if somebody says, well, I'm the biggest Dragos, uh, you know, it, it's a small world, right? So I know people who are, who are over there, we would reach out and we could work on that third party API integration. So do we support it today? No, but does that mean that we wouldn't do it in the future? That's, it is, uh, it, the more integrations, the better, right? Yeah, yep, yeah. all right, super. Um, Paul has a question, what's the difference in performance between TrueFort with agents versus agentless implementations? Well, you, you would be adding an extra agent, right? It, instead of just using Sentinel-1 or CrowdStrike. But I'll tell you, it's very lightweight because all it's doing is collecting that telemetry and everything and then sending it to the appliance. And then when you come back, when it comes back with a, you need to only allow these things, it's a really lightweight thing. It doesn't take an extraordinary amount of uh, compute uh, resources or storage. So that's, uh, it's, uh, nobody ever believes me. You know, I, I, I expect my peers here on the call to be uh, skeptical, but do a proof concept with us and we'll install the true forward agent and you'll see what happens as you're gathering that information, as you're profiling that agent, and then as you enforce on that agent, it's a minimal lift. So. Okay. okay. All right. Great. Um, we have a question here from Kale. How do we handle dynamic environments with frequent changes, such as acquiring new companies? Kale says we acquire one per year. What What can you guys do for M and A or, or divestitures? Man, that's a, I love that. That's a, that is a perfect use case, right? Because when you're merging, you don't know what you're getting, and a lot of organizations are starting to say, "Hey, you know, before." 
we do this thing, this acquisition, this merger, you know, merger of equals or this acquisition of another organization, you know, we need to validate that this isn't the Marriott Starwood breach, right? So the thing that you would do is using the same appliance, that same central processing brain, the big brain that's doing everything in the background, you would create another organization and then you would keep them completely separate until you knew that they were good. And this is when you begin that merge. And here's with that, again, that visibility is gonna be huge for those infrastructure teams and those app teams who are working on maybe getting rid of some tech debt and merging systems. And so it, it'll bring a lot of value in the M&A and the same thing applies for a divestiture or you know, say you've got, uh, you're an organization that has government contracts and you have to keep certain data separate, right? For say for CMMS, uh, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, you have to keep that information 100% separate from your other infrastructure. And so those are things we can do that are light. You can divest yourself or separate these classified from non-classified environments. Okay, all right, great. Um, you know, you talked a lot about, uh, you know, sort of the benefits of, of uh, micro segmentation. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what makes TrueFort different from other security segmentation solutions. So I'll, I will be absolutely honest. I came here from Illumio where I spent five years and Illumio is a great company and I, or I wouldn't have stayed there for five years. But when I, when TrueFort came to me, I was like, eh, you know, I'm not really interested, but they showed me these things. This is the only true multi-product platform, like multi-solution platform, I should say, where in one single stack, you've got FIM, you got service count mapping, you've got uh, sys controls, and you can control conf you know, config drift. You can do micro segmentation really fast. And they're the only ones that are truly real time. So there are a lot of benefits. I, I love the the ui i love the fact that this is it's based on that base high frequency trading system so it's fast and it's ultimately scalable and can take on hundreds of thousands of servers so uh, the things we do and do better are get you to that behavioral profile and get you to enforcement more quickly than anybody else can do all right all right great thank you um, next question, uh, they're asking, we have a flat network and no real CMDB, you know, source of truth. Can you, can you help us with that? You are not alone. In fact, you are with the vast majority. They, it, you may be with, uh, you may only have a hundred servers. You may have a hundred thousand servers, but more often than not, networks are big, open, uh, flat. And, and that's because networks. Working's job is to keep things moving, 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 and never stop things, right? So mm -hmm. then you add security into this, and security is like slow down, slow down, slow down. And so there's that clash of the two, especially when you're putting in hundreds to thousands to tens of thousands of firewall rules trying to do that kind of segmentation. So what we do is you know, we give you the ability to, without breaking the network, because again, it's zero trust, right? We're, we're doing simple, we're doing allow lists rather than thousands of denies. So we get you there more quickly. So flat network, you're, this is bread and butter for us. And as far as, uh, you know, what was the second part of the question? Sorry, I lost myself in there. Um, let me, let me pull that up here. Let me, uh, one second. Oh, uh, just no real CMDB source of truth. Right. So I mentioned that briefly in there where, so we could take tags, like if you've got VMware tags or AWS tags, or um, if you've got a spreadsheet, we, we'll figure out a way to to munge that data because I, I have run into in you know a decade of working with customers who have spent a lot of money on CMDB, I've only met one organization that was fully confident going into the the you know our proof of concept and then implementation, and they realized that they weren't as accurate as they as they should be. So we were able to help them get become accurate. 
So it doesn't matter if you don't have one, we'll figure it out. We're, we've been doing this long enough and with big enough organizations where we'll, we'll take that information, that, that context from wherever we can get it from. Okay, all right, great. Um, Al has a question about delivery. Uh, just to, to clarify, there's an MDR option as well, and then you're able to deliver the solution as a service? Yes, so we are able to deliver the solution as a service. You'll still uh, need someone, and it could be an, a, a managed dis, a detection response. It could be that as well, like where you have a, a virtual SOC or a third-party provider, a, a, an MSSP, doing those things but yes we host we can host that but um we can host the appliance but we do work with um integrators and as i said we can take that data take the log data and get it to uh, the the SOC or the mssp or the mdr so it's very integratable well, Matthew, this has been kind of a lightning round of questions. Appreciate you uh, you fielding all of these uh, it, it so quickly. Um, it, we probably got time for one more, and, and this is probably a good one to close on. They're asking, our organization isn't currently implementing any micro-segmentation procedures. What's the first step? The first step is to give us a call. I mean, people don't, we're in tech, and I know it's hard when you're, you're, you have so many things going on, but you reach out. We talk about the goal is to find out what you're doing. Are you starting a big program for zero trust? Are you struggling to figure things out? Have you been breached and nearly breached? It, why are we here? And from there, we help you, again, define, design, and implement from the proof of concept all the way through the professional services, and we'll get you where you need to go. Okay. Well, Matthew, this has been this has been awesome. The, the uh, I really appreciate the framework about micro segmentation and the details about TrueFort, and then a great demo, and then all your insights here in the Q and A. Uh, really appreciate your time. Thanks for bringing us up to speed on TrueFort. Hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate everyone's time. All right, and we have one more piece of business, and that is the Amazon gift card prize drawing. And so the winner of that $250 Amazon gift card today is Julian Partita from California. Congratulations to Julian. We'll be in touch to get you your card. And with that, on behalf of the actual tech media team, I just want to thank Truefort for making this event possible. And thanks as always for attending and for all of your great questions. That concludes this event. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you next time.